yes. No matter what. No matter what. He is worthy. He is worthy to be praised, worthy to be glorified, worthy to be magnified, no matter what. He is God and God alone. He is God and He is on His throne, no matter what. Hallelujah. Precious God and Father, your word tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And it is on a night like this, Lord, we come together so that our faith can be built up, so that we can be strong, strengthened, so that we can be encouraged through your word and by your spirit. And precious Lord, we pray that even as your word goes forth tonight, it will accomplish your purpose. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God richly bless you. Before you take your seats, put your hands together and give God... <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, he's such a wonderful God that we can love him no matter what. Hallelujah. God bless you richly. You may be seated. I'm going to try hands free tonight. If we could get a little monitor. I don't have a voice like Brother Glenroy, so you have to raise my monitor. He can hear himself. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Daniel, chapter 3. Daniel, chapter 3. Are we all there? If you're looking for it in the New Testament, you're in the wrong place. You need to get into the Old Testament and you will get to Daniel there. When you would have found it, I just want to make a few statements. Everybody there? Okay, there was a time we read in the book of Mark. Um, I think it's chapter 11, that Jesus was walking with his disciples and uh, they were hungry, the Bible tells us. And seeing a fig tree afar off with leaves on it, he went seeing if there was any fruit. And there was no fruit, but it was the time for figs. And Jesus cursed the fig tree, says, no more will you ever bear. And the next day they were passing, and Peter says, Lord, look, the fig tree is dead. And Jesus made a statement. He says, have faith in God. If we go down to the book of Hebrews, we will read in Hebrews 3, that the writer of Hebrews, inspired by the Holy Spirit of God, says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And if we go into the Gospels, Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, what we would see there is that faith is ascribed to being able to receive from God by simply believing. In many instances in the Gospels, all Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, faith is ascribed to receiving something by merely believing. Okay? As a result, invariably, to have faith suggests one is able to receive something from God. Let me say that again by virtue of what we read in the Gospels. To have faith suggests that one is able to receive something from God, whether it is a healing or whatever your need is. If you have got faith as small as a mustard seed, you would be able to say to the mountain, depart and go yonder in the sea. That's what Jesus says, okay? 
So the question I want to ask tonight is, what happens if a child of God is faithfully praying about a particular thing and does not receive it? How many of you have had occasion to pray about a particular thing and even now, up to now, you have not received it? Let me see your hands. There we go. So let me ask you something. You can't please God. Because if you have to have the faith to receive and you have not received and the Bible tells us without faith it is impossible to please God, then all of us who have raised our hands and I could raise both hands in that question, then we can't please God. I'm only teasing you. Tonight I want to introduce you to a faith, the kind of faith that pleases God. I want to introduce us to the kind of faith that pleases God. How many of you here tonight would like to be God pleasers? Let me see your hand. Very good. I'm so glad to hear that, to see that. Too many we find in churches that people want to be men pleasers rather than God pleasers. Now we're in the book of Daniel chapter 3. Remember we are looking at the kind of faith that pleases God. Because the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. And some of us, if not all of us, have been exercising faith in a certain way to receive something from God. And we have raised our hands indicating we have not yet received it. So we're looking at the kind of faith that pleases God. Chapter 3 of Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three, four, three score cubits and, a breadth, and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then an herald cried out aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And whosoever falleth not down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the song of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations and languages, fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man that shall hear the song of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whosoever falleth not down and worship, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, 
nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do you not serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you be ready, he's given them a second chance now. If you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O King Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Or in other words, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. This is where the message is, but the rest of the reading is so beautiful that I can't help myself. So if you don't want to hear it, you can block your ears, but I'm going to read it. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was supposed to be or needed to be. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, their pants, and their hats, even their hats. They bind up their hats and all, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, to throw them in, of course. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three bound men in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king, he answered and said, Look, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Oh, every time I read that, I get a little chill upon my... I got some Pentecostal pimples. Then Nebuchadnezzar came to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God. Remember he was saying, let me see that God who is going to save you. Listen to him now. You servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire hath no power, nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, 
nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach. Oh my God, I just love this. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants and trusted in him, that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their god. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill. Because there is no other god that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. This was not a hypothetical situation. This is the word of God, inspired by the Spirit of God. It is an actual happening. So it's not a hypothetical situation. This is the real deal. The furnace is real. The fire is real. And the king's ego is real. <laughs> this was the king of Babylon. Egotistical beyond reason. He saw himself as a god. And listen to what he built. He built himself an image of gold. It is given in cubits here. I took time to change it into feet for those of you who are old school like me. And even to, um, what's the other thing? Meters. For those who are not as young as me. <laughs> 90 feet high. Now listen, that, that pillar there is about 9 feet high. I remember... When I was ministering on Goliath, I had it measured. That pillar is nine feet high. The image that Nebuchadnezzar built in gold of himself is 90 feet high. That's ten times that pillar. That goes way, way, way above this building. And... The width of the image was 9 feet wide, or 30 meters high and 3 meters wide. Now we read in verse 5 that at what time the music begins to play, everyone, every man must bow down and worship this image. This was not a question of just at the dedication. The dedication was the first instance. But the Bible tells us at what time. Which means that people can be going about doing their work, attending to their business, and suddenly they hear music playing, and you have to leave everything that you're doing and drop on your face, not on your knees, drop on your face and bow down and worship this image. Now the image could only be in one place. The image was not omnipresent. But wherever you are, in whatever province, whatever country that was controlled by Babylon, by Nebuchadnezzar, once this music begins to play, everybody, Tutman Bagai, had to fall on their face and begin to worship this God. Now, in Babylon at the time, there were some Jews. They were taken captive. Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego, Daniel was there. But in this instance, I don't know where he was. He's not mentioned. But these three Jewish boys refused. They refused to bow down when the music began to play. And the Chaldeans saw them and went and told Nebuchadnezzar that they refused. Nebuchadnezzar, as we read, gave them a second chance. 
he said to them, Will you now bow down? Listen to what these three boys said. After they were threatened to be thrown into a burning, fiery furnace. They are looking at the furnace. It's not yet fired up, but they are looking at it. They know that they can be thrown in there. All they had to do was to bow down in agreement with Nebuchadnezzar. Just bow to his image and their lives would be spared. But if they didn't, they would be thrown into the fiery furnace. Shadrach, verse 60, Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to go any further, to discuss this thing any further. We are not going to bow down. I told you it's not a hypothetical thing. This is real. The fire is real. The threat is real. Their lives are at stake. All they have to do is to bow to the image. But listen to them. We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, now we're going to look at a degree of faith here. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. Now, wouldn't you say that that is having faith? You know, I don't believe that is having faith. I believe that they were operating under a presumption that if God, if they were thrown in the fiery furnace that God will deliver them. You say, Pastor, why presumption and not faith? Well, faith does not shift from its stance. If it were faith, there would be no shifting. But look at the next line. He says, and if not, so then how could it be faith? And if not, now comes the faith. If not... Be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. This is the kind of faith that we sang. What's the song? <laughs> no matter what, that kind of faith is the faith that pleases God. Imagine you have an illness and you faithfully cry out to God and he heals you, which is a thing that happens all the time. Yes, you have exhibited a faith. That faith in receiving what God has done for you, God is glorified. The servant is satisfied. But what's the big thing about that insofar as pleasing God as compared to this kind of faith that will watch a fiery furnace and the threat of being thrown into it with the option of bowing down and living or being thrown into the fiery furnace if you don't bow down. And these three boys said, our God will deliver us. But if not... We are still not bowing down to your image. What's the name of the song? No matter what. Why am I making heavy weather of this? Because in the body of Christ we have people who they muster up a kind of faith to receive from God. And the thing doesn't happen. How many of you have, you have prayed and everything that you have prayed for, you have gotten? Let me see your hands. Not a hand. So what's wrong with your faith? The point I am making tonight is 
that the kind of faith that pleases God is the, what kind of faith? No matter what. You have in the kingdom of God people moving away from God, losing trust in God, arguing against God because they cannot receive, they did not receive the thing or the things that they have been praying for. Not remembering, as we sang also, not remembering the times when God blessed. Not looking back in times past and seeing how God responded to Christ, answered the prayer, did what they asked, blessed in many ways. You forget that because this is the matter now that's going to determine whether God loves you or not. My dear friends, let me tell you that this kind of faith, the no matter what, I don't care if you throw me in the fiery furnace, I am not going to bow down to your image. This is the kind of faith that pleases God. It is easy, very easy to fall on your knees and to pray. And ask God for a blessing. And you get the blessing. And you say, praise God. Yes, God is glorified. But what happens when you're praying for mommy? Or you're praying for daddy? Or you're praying for daughter or son? They're sick. It's terminal. They're dying. You're crying out to God. Save their life. Don't let them die. You can't bear the thought of seeing any of the relatives that I mentioned die. And then what? They die. What happens to our faith? Could we at that time say, Lord, I am hurting, but thank you, God, not for my mother dying, not for my father dying, but in spite of them dying, I can thank you and I can praise you and I can declare my love for you that there is no turning of my love in spite of and regardless of what's happening in my life. No matter what. No matter what. This is the kind of faith that pleases God. Not just the faith that you get something from God and you bless God. Yes, that's good. We all like that. But what about when we don't get it? Let us look and see how in verse 21, see the God that we serve. He could have stopped God could have stopped them from going into the fire. Isn't that how we like to exercise faith? God, don't let this thing happen. God, don't allow. But let me tell you something. There are times when he won't let it happen. There are times when he won't allow. But there are times when he will allow. Oh, I like to talk about David. David is running from Saul. Saul is after, to, after David to kill him. We read it in the book of Kings. David gets to a certain place, bed down for the night, and next morning he hears that Saul is on the way, coming to get him. David is a man after God's own heart. God is the one that said it, not David. God said he's a man after my own heart. David asks God, God, will you allow Saul to find me? I am sure that David had in his mind that God will say, No, son, how you expect me to do that? But here, God, yes. <laughs> David must have been flabbergasted. He said, will you allow him to kill me? No, will he kill me? Hear God. Yes. 
Oh, what kind of God is that? The kind of God that knows the future. The omniscient God. The God that knows that David could not be killed if David did what David's supposed to do. There are times when you have to run. There are times when you have to fight. He who fights and runs away lived to fight another day. David ran and he lived. God does not always work the way we expect him to work. I say this so often behind here because it is my own experience, my life experience. He does not work the way we expect him to work all the time. But I can guarantee you this tonight. Whenever he does not work the way we expect him to work, he works a better way. He works a better way. You see, we can only see and think so far. But God is infinite. He knows all things. He can put things in place for you next year, today. But you don't know that. But we could be complaining and quarreling and fretting or praying and God not answering that is today because we are in today, we are, we are the subject of time. But God has already made the way. He has already prepared the way. When Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, it didn't catch God by surprise. God had a plan. He made provision before the foundations of the earth was laid. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, was chosen to be slain to save mankind long before God is a God of plan. Let us not forget that we can stay in this moment. We cannot go into the next moment before it comes. But God walks up and down the corridors of time, eternity to eternity. He's a timeless God. He's not the product of time. He created time for us. He works with time because of us, but he's not the product of time. So what I am saying is that if we really have got to exercise a faith that pleases God, it has to be a no matter what faith. Lord, bring my husband back. Lord, my wife, my children. And we expect it to happen. But if it doesn't happen, is that going to affect our relationship with God? Or we might say no. But when we get to that place in time, many, many have fallen away because they did not get what they asked for. I remember national insurance when I worked there. My Clark, in the office, I started to talk to her about Jesus. She said, don't tell me anything about your Jesus. What do you mean? Why? Don't tell me anything about your Jesus. Jesus killed my child. How could Jesus? I prayed. I gave my life to the Lord Jesus. He said, he will never leave me. He will never forsake me. When I was begging him from a child, he forsake me. Don't tell me nothing about you, Jesus. That is not a whatever. No matter what faith. That is a conditional faith. That I get from God what I ask of God. We see it a lot in the Gospels. But we should not just read the Gospels and think that this is the way God has to work. Read Daniel. And you will see that he allowed Daniel to be thrown, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, to be thrown into the fiery furnace. Listen to Nebuchadnezzar. Stroke the fires seven times hotter than it's supposed to be. Stoke it seven times hotter. 
He wanted to make, he was so rough. He wanted to make sure that they burn to singes and still feel that they're burning after they burn to singes. He was wrath. You don't want to bow down to my image. I gave you a second chance. And you telling me your God will deliver you. Let me see the God that will deliver you. And he called the biggest men to grab Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego and tie them up. Tie their feet, tie their hands, tie their body, tie their clothes, tie their hat and all. We read that there. They were like a cocoon. If someone ties your hands, ties your feet, wrap up all around you and throw you in on the ground, how are you going to get up? There is no way you can stand again. And all three were bound like that and thrown into the fiery furnace. But when Nebuchadnezzar looked, what did he see? He saw four walk in. But how they got up? You see, the third, the fourth man there, Nebuchadnezzar recognized, even though he didn't know about him, he recognized that it was like the Son of God. We know who the Son of God is. And I want you to know that this Son of God, it was not the first time when, um, what's the guy's name who died and was in the, and he called him for Lazarus. It wasn't the first time a bound man became loose in a grave. Our God, the God that we serve, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Lord, and our God, is able to undo anything that anyone tie us up with. You feeling like you're in a fire tonight? You're feeling bound up tonight? You feel like the fire is so hot it's going to consume you? Listen to what Jesus says. I will never leave you. Do we, do, do we really sit down and think about the words of God? I will never leave you. I will... Ne when is never? When is Never. Never is finished after a certain time. Never is never. Regardless of what is happening to you at the moment, it's still never. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Do you understand why Paul? Oh, I love Paul. Do we understand why Paul? Ask the questions in Romans 8.35. Who? Shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? He says, I am persuaded. I was in America three weeks ago, and I heard Brother Glenroy Beating this word, persuaded like he's crazy. I am persuaded. There is no doubt about it. What he said, I'm completely convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, high depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. That's why Nebuchadnezzar, when the three Jewish boys was in the fiery furnace, when he looked, that's why he saw four. Because God is true to his word. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Did he not say to the prophet Isaiah that when you go through the fires, you shall not be burned, neither shall it kindle upon your flesh. Did he not promise that? Well, here is the promise being fulfilled. Seven times hotter. 
in a fiery furnace. So hot that the men who held them and bound them to throw them in, the fire came out and consumed them. But the three boys, loose, walking, and talking to their partner, the fourth man, Jesus Christ, in re pre incarnate. What I am telling you tonight is yes, we need to have faith. Jesus says, have faith in God. The Bible tells us without faith, it is impossible to please God. We read in the Gospels many instances where it is as a result of a faith they received from God. Thy faith have made thee whole. Only believe. And we read it oftentimes in the Gospels. My point to us tonight is, yes, there is little faith. The Bible tells us that. There is also great faith. The Bible tells us that. There is also mustard seed faith. The Bible tells us that. But I want us to know tonight. I want us to settle it in our heart. That no matter what. How many of you prepared not just to sing the song. But to say really to God. With the thing that you have before him. No matter what. We are going through with you. This kind of faith testifies about our God, the God that we serve. This kind of faith is a witness to the God that we believe in. How so, Pastor? I read it in the last few verses. Having demonstrated the, that kind of faith, no matter what, not even if you throw us in the fiery furnace, we're still not bowing down. That kind of faith pleases God. It's a witness of the God that we serve. Listen to Nebuchadnezzar. I'm going to read it again. Then Nebuchadnezzar. When? Then. When is then? Then after they refused to bow down, experienced the deliverance, then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants and that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word, and yielded their bodies, that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own. Therefore, the king who made a decree that anyone bow, not bowing down will be thrown in the fire, he is now making a counter decree. He said, therefore I make a decree. No, oh, he looked like he liked to make decrees. <laughs> that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill. Why? And this is the witness. Because there is no other God that can deliver after this soul. So, the no matter what kind of faith pleases God. It's a witness, our witness, about the God that we serve and look at the last verse. Then the king promoted Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. That kind of faith brings promotion. Oh, you're not. <laughs> Listen, I'm getting excited here. That kind of faith brings about promotion. And keep your job out of this. Keep your job. That's the first. Oh, God, I'm going to get promotion if I demonstrate. No. This kind of faith takes you up a level in faith in God that you had never had had before. 
It moves you from little faith to great faith, to mountain moving faith, to no matter what faith. That, I believe, is the faith that pleases God. Put your hands together for the Lord. In the very Daniel, Daniel demonstrated that kind of faith. If you ever be caught praying to any God, we're going to throw you in the den of lions. What did Daniel do? He exhibited a no matter what kind of faith. He opened his windows to the east just as normal and he prayed three times. Lion or no lion. No matter what going to serve his God. What happened? Darius, heathen king, what did he do? He began to talk about Daniel's God as well. Another witness. And if we go down, oh, I like this part too. I didn't want to do it, you know. But if we go down to the book of Hebrews 11, we're going to see all kinds of Things happened as a result of exhibiting faith in God. We're not going to go through those. The one I want to go through is this one. Others had a trial of cruel mockings. We read about all those who did great things by faith. But it is by the same faith others had cruel mockings scourgings, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sown asunder. By faith, you know. By faith. They, 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 they allowed themselves. They would not do anything against God. Kill me if you wish. No matter what. They had been sown asunder were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute. Oh, we have a little something in the fridge, and we, oh God, where, where are you, Lord? Destitution, afflicted, tormented. Oh, don't ask for that. As soon as we go through a little pressure from somebody else, oh God, why? Tormented. By faith, they were tormented of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, and these all having obtained a good report though through faith, received not the promise. Faith is not only about receiving. Oh, I hope that through this word tonight we all develop the no matter what kind of faith. I have time. I'll give you a little testimony. I was going through one of the many worst situations in life. Pastor, how you arrive at one of the many worst? Well, they were all worst. One of the many worst situations. And I knelt down before God. First, I imagined that I was seeing Job. And I said, Job boy, you think you had it hard? Comparing what I was going through to be worse than what Job went through. Of course, it was not. But you know, we always think that our own is the worst. This is not to dance to my own drumbeat. I cannot preach what I have not lived. Jesus, God said to me, to preach my word, you have to live my word. I was living hell. I clenched my fists before God, kneeling, bright sun, at my bed. I said, go ahead, kill me but you're not going to stop me from loving you no matter what. That's why I can preach what I preach tonight. It's a no matter what kind of faith 
that pleases God. Walking through Ramsaran Plaza, another worst case situation in my life. This one was worse than the last worst. <laughs> Shagwana's Ramsaran Plaza, walking through. Lord, you know, you know what I'm, what I'm going through. You know how I'm hurting. I, Lord, I know you cannot. I tell God that. I know, God, you cannot change the situation. I know, God, that I will always hurt like this. I say, but I will never stop serving you, no matter what. I told you this before. Two weeks after, having suffered for almost three years with unimaginable hurt, it felt as if God put his hand down inside of me and uprooted everything. I wake up in the morning and it was all gone. No matter what. It pleases God. It tells God that no matter what happens to us, we are going to hold him as our God. He's going to be on the throne. We are not going to move him from the throne because of what we are going through. Because it's not everything that God is going to deliver us from. Why, Pastor? Because he didn't deliver me from some of those hurts. But he used them and worked them together for the purpose that I am here tonight. He's a good God. He's a great God. He's a wonderful God. And he always has your best interests at heart. You don't know what's good for you. But he knows. We think we know what is good for us. We think we know if we marry this man, we will ride off in the sunshine. <laughs> what we don't know is the sun isn't always going to shine. Nighttime will come and weeping may endure for that night. But God knows. And if we don't fight with God and we listen to him, we wouldn't have to face those situations down the road. I don't know why I always end up on marriage, you know. So, the loved ones tonight, let us understand. We can't put God in a box and say, this is how you have to work on my behalf. Does God bless? Of course he blesses. How many of you have receive answers to prayer time and time again. Let me see your hand. There we go. So we can't say that God doesn't answer prayer. We can't say that God doesn't bless. The point is, he's not always going to do what we ask, when we ask it, how we ask it. And if he doesn't do it the way we think, we believe that he has not done it when he has a better plan. God always always has a better plan in mind. So that we must leave things into his hand. Don't do like the Israelites and murmur. The Bible tells us in Corinthians that they passed through the water, meaning they went through the Red Sea. They were under the cloud. God shaded them for 40 years in the wilderness with a cloud, leading them Shading them, supplying manna, everything that they needed. But they murmured. And what did the Bible tell us? But God was not pleased with them. They did not exhibit the kind of faith that pleased God. They murmured when things were not going their way. They murmured when things were not going the way they expected. But tonight I want us as a people of holiness revival ministries to develop a no matter what kind of faith. Because no matter what, he's still God, he's still on the throne, and we can't do anything about it. That's just the way it is. God bless you. Let's start. That's just the way it is. I like that song, you know.
That's just the way it is. We can't change it. He's God and God alone. And no matter what, we should trust him, we should believe in him, we should love him and be faithful to him. No matter what. by hearing and hearing by the word of God you have just heard a faith building message building the kind of faith it is intended to build the kind of no matter what faith I'm going to ask the choir to sing this chorus just the chorus no matter what and I want you we're going to sing it for about 10 you know 10 whatever no, no matter what I would love you no matter what I would love you no matter what I would love you no matter what <laughs> stances you call it and I want you not just to, don't, don't worry the board don't put it on the board because if we don't know how to sing that yet just then we don't know don't put it on the board see the Lord Jesus Christ Sing or speak from your heart and make it an affirmation tonight. Lord, I'm going to love you no matter what. Let's make it an affirmation.
from our hearts to God. Let's go. Raise your hands to the Lord. here tonight and you don't know this God you know about him you have heard about him you probably go to church other than being here tonight you pray but do you know him do you know him do you know that his spirit dwells within you that can only happen if you invite Jesus Christ to come into your heart, to cleanse you from sin by his precious blood that was shed at Calvary. Only then, when you confess him as Savior and Lord of your life, and you are born of his spirit, only then you can say you have got the spirit of God in you. So if you have never had this experience, and it is quite an experience, a life-changing experience, if you have never had that kind of experience, we want to help you with it tonight. The most glorious thing that can happen to any human being is to know that they are cleansed from all sin and they have been reconciled to God from whence we were all separated because of sin. So if you're here tonight and you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and you want to do so tonight, we want to help you with it. Right where you are, just raise your hand. We will help you with a prayer and you will come into the most wonderful experience of being born of the Spirit of God. Is there one here tonight? 
Is there one? Is there one? Now, I'm seeing a few new faces around, but I want you to understand this. God has given you an opportunity to embrace His Son, Jesus Christ, who gave His life for you, so that you do not have to go the way of hell. He's opening the door way, so that when you will depart from this earth, you would be heaven bound. Not to accept what God is offering you is to reject the one who gave his life for you. So I'm going to ask you again, I don't want to pressure you, but we are here for this purpose. We are here to snatch people from the road to hell and put them on the road to heaven. Is there anyone here tonight that will say yes to Jesus? Precious God, precious God, you know all things, you know all hearts. You know the heart that you're tugging at right now. So far it's unresponsive, but Lord, we ask for your grace and mercy to go with that person or persons as the case may be so that they would have yet another opportunity before it is too late. For precious Lord, when we would have passed out of this world without Jesus Christ, there is never ever going to be another chance, another hope of being reunited with you. And so I ask your grace and your mercy in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you richly. You may be seated. If the ushers would come and receive the Lord's